I don't know how I'm going to cover this so vast subject in five minutes. Let me try. Uh, national accounts, interest rates, employment, wages, inflation, balance of payments, population, crops, and so on. Uh, these agencies uh, really receive, uh, collect, validate, report, and exchange so much of uh, statistical data. They needed a standard by which they can have uh, the data exchanged both syntactically as well as uh, semantically consistent way. That's how this uh, SDMX, which is Statistical Data Metadata Exchange, got uh, came into being in, in 2001. It's the 10th year, and the version is 2.1. Uh, it's sponsored by these seven uh, international organizations that includes UN. UN sponsorship in uh, 2008 really gave a big boost to the standard. It's also an ISO standard. Uh, it's got two of flavors, one is uh, EDI versions, other is XML version. There are three important aspects of this standard. One is the information model. I'm not going to go through the entire model, but the important thing for us to understand is this. Uh, the metadata consists of two uh, important aspects of metadata. One is called structural metadata, other is a reference metadata. Uh, structural metadata basically is very similar to our uh, data warehouse cube model where you have dimensions uh, and uh, attributes and the measured value associated with the dimensions. This is, a, there is a time is a special dimension because most of the statistical data they deal with are really time series data. Uh, this uh, particular aspect of, uh, it also has been adopted by W3C in their, uh, in their government data activity. It's called uh, RDF cube, so you can Google that. So that's an essential aspect of the uh, structural data aspect. On the reference data, metadata aspect basically is all the textual aspects, and it covers things like uh, uh, statistical concepts uh, and uh, such descriptive aspects of it, like methodology and quality aspects. Uh, one of the things I would really encourage is go through this New York Fed. Any foreign exchange data that's download you and this, this uh, link also gives you all the SDMX uh, layouts corresponding to uh, this model. So if you go to Bank of uh, Canada today, again, you can download in the SD SDMX format of the foreign exchange data. And then how do, they, uh, how do the standard harmonize the contents? That's through the what's called the COG, content-oriented guidelines. There are cross-domain concepts, statistical subject matter uh, domains, and uh, common vocabulary through which they harmonize the understanding of the data between one and the other organizations. The cross-domain concept is very important. What they have done is they have really issued uh, code lists that are, that are common across all these uh, various organizations and domains. And then they also defined the IT infrastructure modes by which they define both push and pull mode of uh, this data. There is extensive documentation available. Um, and there are over eight videos. You could really watch it. And there are so much of documentation on developer tools, and as well as implementation guides, and so on. Uh, that's because of the uh, high-profile organizations involved here. The, uh, the documentation is really good there. Uh, there is not much of Python activity in the SDMX area, except for one UK Treasury application I found. Most of the tools are really Java, .NET, and Adobe tools, and they're all open source tools. Now, talking about DSPL, this is uh, Google's version of similar to SDMX. It's called Dataset Publishing Language. Uh, Google has got a public uh, data explorer, and DSPL is the language to upload data into this uh, uh, public data explorer. DSPL consists of one XML and a set of CSV files, but conceptually it's very similar to that of uh, SDMX. Uh, they also have the, the concepts and associated uh, dimensions, attributes, and so on. So they also have both uh, structural metadata as well as the informational metadata. Uh, Google, again, defines something very similar to the SDMX, what we called as a common domain or a code list. Google defines what's called a canonical concepts by which they define things like geo and time and so on uh, as, a, as a harmonizing aspect of the data. So there is a visualization tool along with the Google data. So that's a, 
that visualization tool enables you to view the data in, compare the data, and so on. Uh, then the documentation and tools that are essential tutorials and developer guide is available for the Google tool. Uh, DSPL tool is really is written in Python because it's Google. Uh, that's a very simple command line tool. You can generate uh, DSPL as well as validate uh, DSPL. And there is a DSPL forum also there. And the benefits of a standard is you now it's technology neutral and people can write the open source tools and so on. Uh, just a quick reminder, next year is the year of uh, international statistics. We in the Python community have contributed so many packages directly or indirectly to the field of statistics. I just want to end with saying truth, nothing but truth, and statistics. Thanks. Thank you very much. Ashwin, if you'd like to come up.